Hi, this is Jason, and today we're going to be reviewing the horn in this case, which is a Courtois Evolution Double Bell Trumpet. This Courtois Evolution has some features you don't find on every other horn. The first is the double bell system, which is clearly inspired by Monet trumpets. And they did a really nice job of creating a second bell with some bracing underneath to fit against the first. They also have incorporated an adjustable gap receiver. So we're gonna see how that works, see how useful it might be. And we're gonna explore the build quality of this horn. Uh, we're gonna take the valves out, check out some things that may change the way the horn plays for you individually. And then we're also going to test the, the adjustable gap receiver to see what the results are of adjusting it. And we're gonna measure the bore size, the venturi, and do some spectrum analyses on the analyzer here with a few different mouthpieces. Now first I'd like to get some close-ups of this horn so you can see the stamps on it. Serial number 192 and there we have the Courtois Paris stamp. It has the heavy bottom caps. They look to be about 5 eighths of an inch. There's the stamp on the lead pipe. Antone Courtois Paris. Here's the adjustable gap receiver which I had to work very hard to break loose before this video. And I've had a few of these horns, all of the receivers uh, have gotten stuck. There's the double bell system, it's pretty cool. It has some braces up inside here, you can just barely see, but they are there. And then we've got a little sheet brace in this tuning slide. It's a very loose tuning slide. Interesting finger rings. We've got some top bracing that's made from sheet. Clearly inspired by Monet or Taylor. And more standard type braces on the first and third slides. Here we have a spring ball stop. I'm a favor of the spring ball stop. See that? This one's kind of loose, but there's a ball mechanism there that's made out of nylon. And you can pull your slide in and out past that ball. So that way it doesn't fall out when you're playing, but you can still pull it out when you need to. Let's pull the second valve and see what we have for piston ports. So these pistons really don't have a lot of shared space, meaning there's only one little bump in there, and we're gonna have probably better impedance values on this horn. We've got plastic valve guides, which are recommended. And the piston itself looks like it's nickel or stainless steel. Looking extra close, I would say it's stainless steel. I'm not sure though, we'd have to look that up or test it. Aluminum stems. Overall, I would say this horn has uh, fairly decent build quality, and uh, Courtois should be proud of this build. Unfortunately, Courtois discontinued building trumpets. Let's look at this adjustable gap receiver. I'm gonna pull it out and show you the basic theory behind this system. Uh, so this is the receiver. I pulled it out, and there's a little stop ring on it meaning you can adjust it to the gap you want and then set the ring so it's always in that same spot. Now I'm gonna put a mouthpiece in and see what it really does. So here we have a Yamaha mouthpiece. I insert it. Now you can see the mouthpiece extended past the mechanism. So now we're getting more gap than we need uh, or less gap than we need. So by screwing this in, my question is, Will we hit the lead pipe? And then can we achieve zero gap? Well, let's screw it in and find out. I am adjusting it to see if we can get there. And there, we just hit zero. So let me loosen it up a little bit. So right there, it almost pulls the mouthpiece out on its own. So that is zero gap, meaning Yes, it is possible to set your mouthpiece to zero gap on this horn if the mouthpiece will protrude up to or after that shoulder. If your mouthpiece doesn't go all the way in the receiver, you're always gonna have some gap. So measuring gap on this mouthpiece receiver is different than the other videos we do, the other reviews, because we can adjust it here. So let's play this Yamaha, which is a 11C47C. And let's try playing it with zero gap, and then we'll compare it with more. So I'm going to set it up. There we go. Perfect zero gap. Here we go. Yeah. 
Flexibility is very easy, which is what we normally experience when we have zero gap. So I'm gonna slide around for a minute so you can hear that, and then we're gonna increase the gap. Very easy to get around. Uh, now to increase the gap, we won't really know what it is, but I'm gonna go six or seven turns, and I'm tightening that nut again, and then we're just gonna compare it and see what we get. Put the mouthpiece back in. Whew. Six or seven turns actually turns out to be a lot of gap. I can feel it. So it's very hard to slide around on the horn now. I think that's probably too much, so we're gonna back it off. Otherwise, I'm gonna sound like an amateur. Okay, let's go back in. Right about there, so that's our gap setting. All right, that feels a lot better. Now I'm starting to get that balance between flexibility, being able to slide around, and locking in, because I want both. So let's try that. So I'm starting to get a balance between flexibility and sliding that was achieved with this receiver. One thing I want to mention is that I've never been a fan of this particular receiver. Even though I think it's a great solution that should be on every horn, it could be improved, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to take it out and hold it up close to the camera. So right now, if we put this all the way in, we would have zero gap because this end of the mouthpiece would hit the lead pipe. But what happens when you pull it out? When you pull it out, you actually get more gap than you normally would, and that's because the gap now is measured from the outside diameter of this screw mechanism, which is the inside diameter inside the receiver. So it's actually much more air volume than you'd find on a normal mouthpiece with normal gap, uh, meaning that <clears throat> every little turn increases the gap exponentially more. Now, if your mouthpiece didn't go in all the way, now you have another issue where, let me get my hand up there so it focuses. You have another issue where you have a step between the end of the mouthpiece and the inside here, and then another step when it hits the inside diameter of the receiver. <clears throat> In the name of consistency and measurements and results, this system you can find some solutions with, but it really isn't the best system that could solve the problem. And that's why we invented the Venturi Gap Receiver, which is something you can put on almost any horn. And our system <clears throat> is just like the ultimate version of this. We have inserts you can interchange. Uh, the variables are completely measurable and reproducible on every single horn that has this system. So it's a different approach, but I do uh, commend Courtois for coming up with this system. I am sorry it didn't succeed. I was hoping that we would see these on all horns. Unfortunately, you guys don't make horns at all anymore, uh, but it was really nice of you to try to lead the way, uh, at least as a larger manufacturer. So that's the adjustable gap receiver. One of the biggest questions on the Courtois Evolution double bell is, uh, what does that second bell do? And that's a really good question. The only way to really know what it does is to play a bunch of tests on the spectrum analyzer <clears throat> and then take the second bell off and measure it again. Now, I'm not going to do that because I pretty much have to destroy parts of this horn to do that, but I have a pretty good idea of what happens when you do brace horns uh, at the bell and typically it will reduce resonance if you overbrace it. With that in mind, I really don't believe that there's that much bracing underneath this second bell. I think there may only be two or three braces total if you include the bell rim, because it was rolled into the bell rim, and then I know there's a brace right here, and I don't know that it's braced much more than that, so it may be purely aesthetic, which means the bell inside, the one you see here, is resonating just fine. And I believe that because I've done spectrum analysis on this horn with my mouthpiece, and I have seen that the colors that are present uh, really represent some serious resonance in the bell. So let's put my mouthpiece in and play this horn and do a spectrum analysis showing what kind of resonance looks like. Here's my mouthpiece, put it in the horn. I'm bottomed out, so I'm going to get up to zero gap. See if I can do that. All right, there it is. 
think I've got it. Now I'm at zero gap because I adjusted it. I'm going to play and we've got the spectrum analyzer running right now. <laughs> back and play some of these. So I'll go back just a little bit, see what that looks like. And it looks like, all right, look at that. So we have the fundamental, first overtone, second, third, fourth. Look at that fourth overtone, it's a nice spike. It's got some sizzle and color in that little section. And then these dip a little bit and another spike. A couple more dips, a big dip and another uh, little spike. There's quite a bit of harmonics present in this horn, which does show me that there's some resonance, but especially when you see these peaks. Those peaks are representative of some part of the bell literally moving in unison with the standing wave uh, feeding off of each other. That's what creates these spikes in most cases. So there is a lot of resonance in this bell, and we don't find that in bells that have been heavily braced or that are very soft or thick metal. So, despite being a huge bell with a double bell and the looks of this horn, the truth is it's a relatively bright horn that could probably sizzle just fine with the lead mouthpiece. So don't be turned away from this horn by the looks. It can play everything. It would fit well in big band, uh, whether the, you're the solo chair or the lead part, it would do that just fine. In orchestra, band, the spectrum analysis on this horn is great. So it's an amazing sleeper that we have not seen uh, too many times. And you can pick up these Evolution 2 trumpets a lot of times for under $3,500. And in my opinion, they should be worth five or 6,000. So there we have the Courtois Evolution 2 double bell adjustable gap receiver model. And I am personally a fan of this horn.